So now that we have this third floor, let's say we want to look at doing schedules for it and quantity takeoffs. So we can start, we can set up a sheet, and in this case we'll do a, a, a blank sheet where we're starting to add schedules to it so that we can explore what the size of the schedules are, what kind of information we want to include, uh, how it starts to look, and then we can figure out best how to incorporate them into the overall uh, design documentation. So we can, we'll start by looking at an equipment and furniture schedule. We can display the schedules. And so we have two, two schedules with a bit of information here. Uh, the schedules aren't static. What we can do is we can look at different column parameters. We can select and change that. Uh, we can look at um, adding formulas to this. We can do custom design fields. We can also add classification codes uh, to it as well. So once you have these schedules in place, you can also start to add other elements to this. So Jacob's going to start adding some, some furniture to the design. Tiemann, with, while he's doing this, can you explain a bit more about how classification codes can be used as an organizer in the BIM? Um, so classification codes are um, really important in a building information model because they help you to organize um, your BIM. So classification codes are typically defined on a national level or for a certain domain, or they can be related to the work breakdown structure of your, um, of your company. Um, so Omniclass, which is used in this example, is just one example of a classification code system. But of course, other systems can be used, and even multiple systems can be used uh, in parallel, uh, so at the same time. Um, and all, these, all this data, all these properties are of course also available in the 2D deliverables, uh, so they can be used in, in schedules, they can be used in the tags on the, on the floor plans and the sections, and they can also be exchanged uh, through IFC. Ah, yeah, and the classification codes become important also if you're looking at something such as cost estimating in ways that you can start to, start to do that within the BIM. Great, so we can go back to that sheet and we can see that once Jacob updates the schedule, that the furniture that's been added as well as the property information about um, the article number and the classification codes have been incorporated into the schedule as well. So we can look at, let's add one more schedule and explore that a bit. We'll add a, we'll add a window schedule to this sheet. And as we zoom in and look at this a bit, it's got some got a different information about it, about the windows, but it doesn't have a unique identifier for any of the, for any of the windows in particular. Luckily, there's a command for that. Um, so we can go back to the BIM and the ability to provide a, a unique identifier for this, we can access the windows through the structural browser. So we can select the set on the third floor. And then we can run number from the quad. This allows you to also put a prefix, suffix. Uh, if you want to add letters to the unique identifiers, you're able to do that. And so then it processes through the whole set of windows applying, applying those unique identifiers. And then when we go back to the schedule, and we update it, we can see that unique identifier is added to the schedule overall. So if you make changes to the BIM, and the schedule will stay linked to that as well. 